treble, the dream come true for you. Oh, I can't believe it. I can't believe it. Football, by the hell. But you never give in. And that's the winner. Welcome to the American Red Devils podcast. I'm John. I'm Alex. And we're bringing you the best Manchester United news from this side of the pond. Woo, sir. How we doing? How we doing? It is the American Red Devils July Muppetry podcast. We are 10 days away from preseason kicking off in the United States for Manchester United's tour abroad. Transfers trickling slowly. We got one in the door, not official. Apparently, Mason Mount is getting his medical today at Carrington. And the official announcement from the Manchester United Muppets should be coming shortly after that. But what's new at Manchester United? Lots of news. Sale putters along. No real update since the last time we spoke. Um, just hearing a lot of noise on the guitar camp. Radcliffe out. Guitar England to be in. And then Glazer infighting. Who knows what's going on there? Transfers. I'll tell you what. Premier League clubs. They've been active. Chelsea spending money. Liverpool spending money. City spending money. They all have official announcements. Even Mason Mount isn't done yet. But either way, it's going to be a long summer. It's going to be a patchwork summer. As long as the Glazers continue to run this club and the Paia brothers continue to run front office, it's not going to make anybody happy. We're going to be overpaying like we did for Mason Mount. We're going to be waiting late. We're going to be showing our hands. Everybody knows what we need. We need strikers. We need a goalkeeper. Um, and that allows selling clubs to maximize their profit as they did with Mason Mount. So how are we feeling? How are you doing? Look, this is the... Glazer FU. The last Glazer FU is to mess up the final transfer window and hurt us for next season. The sale process obviously is dragging. Sale processes do take a long time. I have to caveat that. It's not like you're selling your uh, used uh, Acura here. <laughs> you're trying to sell a $6 billion asset, so it's going to take some time. They are extracting more value out of the bidders, too. I think that's also part of the problem. But the Glazer's dragging their feet. They got their idiots in seat as they like, just like they had Ed Woodward in for over a decade, making horrible moves in the transfer market, just burning a billion pounds, uh, running this team to the ground, unfortunately. And we are still doing that, and they are still doing that. And the sale process, big distraction for the front office, trying to get the players the manager wanted. Uh, the manager overperformed as well, so you would definitely be wanting to back him this year if you had any ambition. We're not doing that. We're short on cash. So this is a tough summer for all United fans. The best thing to do is know that we got the most important guy in the building. We got Eric Ten Hag. Uh, we're going to be getting some world-class director of football talent with the new manager coming in. There was a little Murtaugh PR. I hated that. Release this week trying to say how good of a job he did. I don't know if he's looking for another job. Yes. But they're using the United PR budget to like pump up one of their guys who doesn't deserve it. Honestly, had no experience to get this job. Bottled the Holland signing. That's probably an all-timer. I don't know how you get employed after that one. He messed up the time zones. Could have signed Holland for three million pounds. You bottle that one. Now he would have been worth two hundred million, one hundred fifty million if we were able to do that deal at the time we did with Ole managing Molda. Um, that one has to follow you around for the rest of your career. Ultimately, yeah. yeah. Um, so you're, you're starting to see people squirm in the front office. They're going to get the chop. We're going to get new blood in. It's going to be a long process. It probably take a year. For United to be really, like, get the Glazers out if they want to leave, which who knows what they're what they're doing right now. Uh, get the Glazers out, get the new people in, get them up to speed. It's going to be next summer. Next summer is going to be the real summer under the new ownership, if there is one. And we just have to temper expectations because Ten Hag has a lot of work to do with this team. We know he's the guy. We know he's not going to be able to sign everyone he wants this summer. Almost the departures are more important. Who can we get rid of? Who can we get money for to then use that? This is a real scrappy type of window. We need to be thinking like getting 30 for Magoo, getting a new keeper in, trying to haggle to get uh, Hoyland. That would be a success for United ultimately. But you're going to be seeing Martial next season. You're going to be seeing Jaden Sancho next season. These are just things that are I know to be true. Big wages on the books. No one's going to pay them. And these players are going to stick around probably one more year before Eric Ten Hag can really clear out with new ownership and uh, refilled cash coffers and a new director of football. That's what I want more than anything. Because this season, like you said, it's, it has been for a long time. Transfer windows have been a largely disappointment. If we spend, we overspend, leave it late. 
show our hand. Everybody knows who we're going for. This season, like I said, we finished the Champions League. The Glazers, historically, over the last 10 years, have been less compelled to spend uh, in these type of situations because we've got that Champions League money, and they like to rest on their laurels. And at this point, you know, ideally they do sell the club, but like you said, we're not going to be ready to rock with an appropriate, adequate front office that is prepared to make deals, move weight, uh, get you know, get good transfer targets in without like completely overpaying by one and a half times as is tradition at Manchester United until next summer at the earliest. And you know what? Like, look at Todd Bowley came in. He made a meal of it for a year and he's like, fuck, I'm not doing this right. So he brought in talent from what Dortmund uh, from Brighton and he brought in proper director of football, a proper front office. And now they're starting to flex a little bit and make moves and, you know what? Got a great deal out of Manchester United to sell Mason Mount. They sold a shit ton of players. Yep. Some of it a little suspiciously. All those Saudi deals, like there's something that stinks no, that's, a little. Uh, that, that's the OG American game. I mean, the, I the thing I that know. you got to like, realize. Giving it to your like LPs like uh, <laughs> in the form of Piff and just like selling them all your dead yeah, wood. Yeah, but the I mean, difference it's a great, it's a between great the two it. is Todd Bowley, he made himself in the come up. Exactly. The Glazers are the sons and daughters of somebody who who is uh, self-made. And that's why the club is angu- anguishing so much. Also, you have five siblings. So I was like, how would it go if you were trying to sell a six billion dollar asset with all your siblings? It'd be a nightmare. Uh, and ultimately, that's why United is a nightmare. Need to get them out, out of control. Whether it be with the Ratcliffe bid or completely kicked out the door with the Qatar bid. But it's going to take longer than everybody wants. It's not like all of a sudden the new owner is going to come in and rain down new players. This is going to be completed after the window is closed. The Glazers are going to just kick us in the nuts one last (laughs) time. Get ready for it. Let's hope that Eric Ten Hag can wheel and deal with the front office numpties to the extent that we can. But they've already put a shopping list of players out on the Internet for everyone to see. And that seems like the most desperate uh, overture to front office uh, dealing I've ever seen in my uh, footballing career. No, I've never seen anyone, maybe like rumor one player is up for sale, but to just straight up print a list of the prices and all the players that are for sale is just absolutely insane. And that means nobody wants any of these guys. Nobody like nobody wants Jaden Sancho in those wages. Nobody wants Martial in those wages. Magoo is probably one team wants them. Uh, it's going to be a tough summer. Sell- selling is going to be the key for United because if you can sell them, raise money, get these guys, they're just dead weights on the bench out of here. That's what we need uh, ultimately. But quick PSA for the podcast. Uh, we got our end of the season survey going. The link is on our Twitter page. I'll pin it today. Check out our survey. We're for fans, by fans. Your feedback is so important to us. We do this every single season. Alex and I read all the feedback. We'll do a podcast later in the summer where we go through all the feedback we received. We're trying to get better. We are not the perfect article. There's a, there's almost, uh, we do it for the fun of the game, but we want to tweak uh, the podcast and everything we do per the fans, per the community, and give you guys what you want. So please give us your feedback. It's less than five minutes, and you get entered into where winning a $100 American Red Devil swag bag. It's pretty sweet. Blankets, scarf, shirts, hoodies, the whole deal. Uh, we pull one out of the hat. I think right now we have 30 people fill out the survey, trying to get 100. Odds are pretty good, so please check it out. Also, if you want to support the podcast, please check out our Patreon page. Big shout out to Eric and Derek for signing up, supporting the podcast on Patreon. You guys are the real MVPs. If you like us, you get an extra podcast every single month on Patreon. Tons of other benefits. Please check it out. Also, check out our website, americadevils.com. Visit our store, americadevils.store. Sir, tell them about iTunes reviews. iTunes reviews or five-star reviews in the America Devils podcast. Wherever you listen, it's a great way to support the pod. Helps us get found organically by other top America Red Devil Muppets like yourself. Uh, and even better, we're still giving away free merch, free gear, free scarf here and there. All you have to do, write a five-star review wherever you listen, ideally on iTunes or Spotify. Uh, but send a screenshot to americadevils at gmail.com with your mailing address and a, and a screenshot of the review. And I will personally pick back and ship some free ARD gear, send it straight to your door anywhere in the world. We just sent out a shipment earlier this week to Poland, to Sweden, all over the great Los Estados Unidos. Uh, and here's a great five-star re- review from Sammy D. Great United show, great source of United news and discussion. They give, they even give history lessons on the club and our opponents mandatory listening for any red. Thank you, Sammy D. And thank you for everyone writing those five-star reviews. 
It's another summer at Manchester United, um, and it's Muppetry time, and it's all about that news. United in the news. Uh, starting with the sale. This is the this is the transfer getting the Glazers out. Number one transfer. That's it. Uh, the Athletic wrote a puff piece on <laughs> Seek Hasim. I mean, uh, he was on Smoke. the board at Credit Suisse in 2010. Very rich. Despite only being in his late twenties, I don't know how you get on <laughs> how the you pull that. Like, like, how do you pull off? Uh, I know how you pull that off. Being Qatari royalty, like he definitely overachieved with getting on the board of Credit Suisse. Maybe they, <laughs> his twenties. <laughs> you pull that off, sir. Any boards in your twenties? Major, uh, you know, Look, top it, ten it, banks in the world. It's uh, if you're gonna be buying a club, you're gonna need like puff pieces like this to make the fans think you're the real deal, uh, even though you are basically like a Glazer uh, child just royalty wise you know so like let's not get it twisted this guy has literally had the uh the golden rattle since he was in the crib uh that is who he is but he's got more money than the glazers and ultimately if owning manchester united is his ambition it's good to hear he has like a business background but time will tell uh, as far as what organization he wants to build and how this team will be run and you can assume it might be better than the Glazers. You don't know. No. You look at PSG. I don't think that's going well. I don't think Correct. the the way the vision for PSG of signing all these Galacticos, it they're not winning nothing. The sometimes they don't win the French League. Pay a lot of money for Messi. Not a great deal. Don't go far in the Champions League. And Mbappe give him all this player power. Then he wants to leave. It just seems to me that like you need something. It, I don't want that to be United. That could easily be the direction he goes, but we're going to have to keep you posted, see who ends up owning him. Ratcliffe could be the worst owner ever. He could be worse than the Glazers. These guys could be better than the Glazers. The fans just have to be in the know and see how these guys come in. But fan communication, club traditions, and histories with the academy are very important. And anyone who's going to be a steward of this club, they're a steward. You can own it for a period of time, but you're going to die or leave it to your children. Someone else is going to run it. And it's, uh, it's very important that they take it seriously and understand the history of this club that you and me talk about so much because that is why Manchester United is so special. Yeah, and speaking of puff pieces, there's been this kind of noise around Sheikh Hasim, around <clears throat> his fanship and the fact that he has been a Manchester United fan apparently for most of his adult life. And I don't know if that's true or not. It, you Never know, seen a picture of him in the kit. They have a picture of him at OT in like one of the fancy boxes um, but if he is a fan, you know, that does give me some hope. But at the end of the day, like you said, it's like just because a guy is backed by the state, and let's be honest, if Hasim's bid is successful, it's a Qatari bid. It's, you know, it's got the backing of the sovereign government of the nation of Qatar. Um, but I just want them to hopefully, you know, if the, the guy who's doing this deal is friends with the guy who did the PSG, PSG deal, you don't like think you can do everything. I think the the reason that if you compare like the success or failures of PSG versus Man City is Man City realized when they came in, you got to hire the best and brightest from around Europe and put them in seat. And I think the PSG folks have wanted to run the reins a little bit too closely to themselves and not delegated positions because look at Messi's exit, look at Mbappe. Everyone's like dying to get out of PSG. They've certainly underperformed. Have they even made it to a Champions League final? Obviously, they haven't won it. Uh, but I don't even think they made it into a final. So money is great, but you need to have the self-awareness to realize like you're not going to know everything and you need to delegate to other folks. And that's why I like the Todd Bowley analogy is great vis-a-vis -vis the Glazers. The Glazers are trust fund babies whose dad built the empire. Todd Bowley is a self-made man, came into the Premier League last year, looked like a fool, but learned quickly. And I think that's the difference. Like he learned in a year what the Glazers couldn't learn in 10. Um, and I'm just hoping because that because if you're not a trust fund exactly. baby, then you lose your, yeah, the money, all your run money out, bro. If you don't figure it out. Exactly. That's the whole point is that he knows you got to If it's not working, you got to tack. And he did. Yeah. Uh, but look, we look, we'll keep you posted on the sale. This is just uh Glazer kids fighting it out, trying to decide what to do. Uh, some people are saying the announcement is coming this week. Again, I put zero I put zero faith in random Twitter accounts saying they have inside information into this multi-billion dollar 
deal for this publicly traded company. But uh, that is Twitter. That is where we live today. And I just say, wait for the news to come from United via press release as has to happen, given they're trading on the New York Stock Exchange. But let's jump into the real news. Mason Mount to join Manchester United from Chelsea in 60 million pound deal. England midfielder to sign five-year contract with an option. He's rumored to be making 200 to 250K a week. Top wages for my man, Mason Mount. How are we feeling? Alex has slated Mason Mount at Chelsea. I have slated Mason Mount at Chelsea. We have <laughs> he's a arguably have he's not a slated now. one player no, we more no, in the Premier League era than Mason Mount. The player that, you know, uh, we have a good friend of ours who uh, unfortunately passed away a few years ago. Uh, we put a memorial plaque. We worked with Chelsea, the football club, to put a memorial plaque to remember him by. Whenever we go to London, we visit it, and there's all the At photos. The and you know, this is a great example uh, of remembering our friend. We he a lot of banter. He always had, had a lot of banter for us. He'd cut us deep about United, and and we'd cut him back about Chelsea. And you go to Chelsea, and you see the photos of Mount, and you and me are just laughing. Ha ha, ha. <laughs> yeah, who's laughing ha, now? Ha, who's ha. laughing now, bro? People think this guy's good. They do. That's what our view was. Like, and we would just always have that view, always have the back and forth banter. Really like, good. They thought like, they thought he was really you good. You guys no, good. I love that he's on your team and you guys keep playing him because you think he's good. Because he's not, he's no good. Guess what? That was Get the him. American Red Devils Get him. <laughs> a until week ago. a week ago. <laughs> yeah. Now, where are you at, sir? You nailed it. Over the last five years, um, I don't think there's a player we've been harder on than Mason Mount. Part of it's because our, you know, our dear friend who tragically we lost, uh, we, he was a player that like got a lot of appearances. He played a lot of games, and every time we would play against Chelsea, Mason Mount would often start. But he he was not a player that shined for me. He seemed to be one of those players that got like a lot of clout in the English press. Maybe one of the boys of Southgate, like Southgate, obviously has preferences. Like, why else would you play Raheem Sterling coming back from like a personal incident versus Rashford? Like, he definitely plays favorites. Mount just felt like one of the boys in the, you know, in this academy lad for Chelsea. Exactly. That's kind of why London I think they boy, were all, like, you know, like, I, you know, totally of that. He's a Manchester. He's about to be a Manchester United player. He's young. He, the manager wants him, right? He's the one making the calls at this point. We overpaid. My problem is we overpaid. We probably could have gotten for 40, 45. We played definitely and we're like, fuck you. We're not going to We'll wait till the end of the window. Instead, we showed our hand and the front office pushed and pushed and pushed and basically went as high as they would go. And they went to 60 million with the 5 million of kind of add ons, which are apparently hard to get. But that being said, it is a baseline that Manchester United are going to overpay on. We're going to overpay when we buy and we're going to under demand when we sell. So like, that fits the bill from a player perspective. I'm not super jazzed on him. I don't think midfield is the priority to strengthen. I think we can cobble something together. Um, goalie and striker, striker, striker is probably much more important to me. So I don't really get going after uh, an upgrade to Erickson, right now, maybe on the defensive side. Maybe not attacking side, but defensive side. That's where he sees Mason Mount fitting in. Well, I think the FA Cup final is fresh in his mind yeah, and how that's why need, he next wants then. to play Erickson. But Erickson can't do the defending. Yeah. And ultimately, not doing the defending gave the Gundogan goal. And, you know, th these are the types of things where if you, I do like what we're thinking here, where it's like get the Erickson replacement now, just like we should have got the De Gea replacement last season. Yeah. So in the midfield, I feel like we're ahead of schedule. Goalkeeper, striker, way behind schedule. Yep. So you're, you're doing the mount deal for like a tidy price. 55 plus five uh and you're way behind you're like three strikers away from being even you're two goalies away from being even but our midfield seems to be decently strong but if you look at eric ten hog is it a surprise he wants the midfield to be the strongest part of the team no probably not Good for point. me mason Good mount point. at the end of the day uh last season champions league nine games play nine games zero goals zero assists not great. Premier League, <laughs> 24 games, 24 games playing a lot of different positions. I'm caveating for all the Mason Mount uh, lunatics out there. Three goals, two assists. 
Yeah, and they're terrible. And they're terrible. I'm going to get year. to the positive parts about signing Mason Mount. I'm just getting to the front office criticism for the people who don't know how worth or salt how to negotiate in this game. You cannot pay 55 million pounds up front plus five add-ons for a player who had a horrid season and is on the last year of his deal. Let's remember everyone talking about the 60 million. It's not bad. It's not bad. He's got one year and then we get him on a free. In that situation, you're talking about, I said, what did I, the price for Harry Kane last year of his deal, that would be like outlandish, but worth getting done 75. Yeah, 75, 80. And he scored 30 legals in a shit Spurs side, in a horrible Spurs team. Yep. Mason 30. Mount, you're already at 60. It's the last year of the deal. This is a bad deal. Shame this is us. a bad deal. You do not pay a premium for players coming off a bad season on the last year of their contract. No ifs, ands, or buts about this. This is the classic United. Oh, like if you could do a deal for Mason Mount for 35 million, 40. great business. Yeah. Great 35 to 40 million pounds. I give you even 40. Great deal. Great business. Hey, probably just an off year. You steal him from Chelsea. He's a top Academy prospect. Lad. There's a good way to think about it. Then you get to the 60 million. You're overpaying by one and a half. United yeah. usually overpay for one and a half to two times. <laughs> yeah, it's just true. a bad valuation. Bad deal all around. But look, Eric Ten Hag, he wants him. Why does he want him? He wants him to play with Bruno because yep. he is great defensively as well as going forward. It is a unique skill set. It didn't shine through last season. There's reasons for why it didn't shine through last season as far as him being played out of position by multiple managers. Multiple managers. They were 12th. Look, a rough season. You, you, can, you, you can explain it away, but the idea is like you want to be buying players on the rise. You to buy a player on off of a low is risky. You know, you're trying to outsmart everybody here. I'd much rather pay 100 million for Declan Rice on the rise than gamble with 60 million on a player who had a bad season and you don't know what you're going to get this year. I hope it's an amazing comeback from Mason Mount who has a chip on his shoulder and is going to be Bruno 2.0 because if you look at the two seasons prior for goal creations, he was top five in the Premier League, up there with De Bruyne and Bruno. And if you're going to get that, then we're good. But off of a bad year, you don't know what that was. And you don't know if it's going to come to United. And this is a risky transaction, one that we need to work out. If you signed all these like studs and then you're just getting Mason Mount in the mix, fine. But if he's getting your marquee yeah. has to work signing, which this is, and we're paying a premium and it doesn't, you, you get caught with your pants down. And Manchester United, we've been caught with our pants down way too much. Yeah, 100%. The player, I think he has it. He's shown good numbers in the Premier League. You know, he was very vital in their Champions League win a couple of years ago. Apparently, man of the match from talking to Chelsea fans. He stood out. As a comp, you know, Kai Havertz also traded this window. I think he only had one extra year on his contract, to also 24. It's a big extra year, Remember, 65. I'm, I'm just trying to provide a full context of the story. I agree. He is young. He's 24. He's, we usually don't sign players that young, which is good. Um, but we're overpaying. I'm not going to defend the fact. We are overpaying. We, sh we could have gotten him probably for 40, 45 um, but that's Manchester United's way. Like, we're going to keep overpaying for players, and we're going to get terrible deals on every player. We're going to sell Hendo for less than we should, Maguire for less than we should, Ethan Laird, who just traded for less than a million. We, saw, we sold him for less than he, we should, Hannibal, et cetera, et cetera. It's the same shit for Manchester United as last year, right? No one, if Anthony goes for 50 million, nobody makes us think of it. If he goes for 85 million, what the fuck? It's hard to live down that price tag. Mason Mount, he's in a similar situation. Not as egregious, right? Because the 80s are. That's steep. That's no, big this money. Is, this, no, this he, is, he's going to have a difficult time. If you look at what we're going to sign. down that price tag, and that's on the front office at the end of the day once again. Um, and here we are. We're going to create a shit ton of, of uh, opportunities for the front men. But who's going to score goals? It's like Bruno created the most opportunities in Europe, and nobody could score a goal. He was like not even in the top five in assists in the EPL. So at the end of the day, he's going to be an important player. I'm hopeful on Mason Mount. But we need a striker to like be gobbling up goals and bearing it into the back of the net. Well, you like preach. I mean, ultimately, but because like you're gonna say if you're gonna sign a hundred million pound striker, you're gonna get Osiman, and then you get uh, Onana, 
and then you like sprinkle in Mason Mount, great window. Late, like late in the window. But I just think if we only have a hundred million net, and the first guy to fall is Mount for sixty, it just stings a little more given our transfer budget and right. kind of where Correct. we're at in the summer. Because this is saying like, hey, this is one of the marquee signings of the window, and it has to work out. Again, looking at the numbers by football reference, um, where he excels is the defensive stats in the midfield. Tackles, 87th percentile. Tackles in the mid-third, 94th percentile. Tackles in the attacking third, 93rd percentile. Um, Shots blocked, 99th percentile for midfielders. Um, And then his attacking stats last season, horrible. 14th percent for goals. Fourteen, twenty uh, fourth percentile for shots on target. Um, overall shot creation, eighteenth percentile. You look at his passing stats, though. This is where he shines. Passes into the final third, eighty fifth percentile. Progressive passes, ninety third percentile. Only behind Bruno, uh, who has ninety fifth percentile. So if you're kind of looking at why Ten Hag wants this signing, is he wants somebody who can do the defensive work and has the vision for the pass going forward. Find Marcus Rashford coming in off the left. Find our new number nine. Like another Bruno. Work with basically another Bruno who has the high work rate playing. It's going to be Bruno Mount Casemiro. Yep. That's how he's going to want to play. I guess the top teams. And this is his thesis in, ex- in exactly what he wants to do. This is the way Ten Hag wants to play, and this player allows him to do it. And so I understand the rationale to go get this player. I question the valuation. I question... C- getting a guy in an off year. Are you trying to get too cute because you're trying to, Oh, every, nobody knows how good this guy is, but I know. And I just, those are always, cause why did he have a bad season? You could have, there's a lot of off the field stuff. I mean, mental, they were shit. They like were shit. Jaden but. Sancho went from like good to bad, like in two seconds, it, there's a, there's a, there's a nuanced answer to why that happened. I don't know the half of it. I hope they vetted Mount and they know that it was because of the managers, but at the end of the day, big dice roll here. I'm rooting for him at the pod, given all the hate we've had for Mount before. I'm going all in. The universe would. I'm would going all in you. on Mount the, now. The I'm, universe I'm, I'm would reward you Mount. with like some good success. You get a kit. Let's get this I'm guy a full kit. Mount kit. I'm getting. I'm getting. The, this is what I'm doing for the American Red Devils community right here. It's After a, the club trades, it's like I'm trying to head fake the universe out because the universe knows I hated Mount so much. I'm going all in, full mount kit, the whole deal, just to head fake the universe so that it turns out to be good for everybody here. You know, so reverse jinx, jinx, reverse jinx, jinx. We need all the help we can get. He says we need him to work out, and we now we're him. all fans. Like, okay, we set our piece. Yeah, we're done. We're done slating him until he sucks. Now we're Mason, number one Mason Mount fans here at the pod Love because Mason's Mount, not because we want to be, because we have to be, given how desperate things are at United. <laughs> hey, we were all Wout fans until he proved us wrong. And we're all rude. I was never a wild uh, fan. I was. I never called that. Bad. I called yeah, that. Okay, like I yeah. saw it. I said this guy's a Burnley clock. reject. Broken He's a bum. Clock. And Broken like clock he, is right twice a day. Like, yeah, fucking. If he scored, it. here's the thing about Wout. He he needed to score at least three more goals and not touch the end. Sabitzer so so scored more goals than him and played in half the game. So that's that's all you need to know about a striker. Anything else on Mount? We cover all. We're the rooting for him. He's got, apparently his medicals today. He is. An Eric Ten Hag player through and through, right? Very good passing, very good off the ball, which we do need because that's where Erickson has not been the strongest. But he's not a great finisher. So if you're going to ask him to score a lot of goals, I don't think you're going to put him in that position. not a great finisher either. No, he's, he, not. he's a better he's finisher true. than Erickson, in my opinion. We need uh, number uh, nine. I, all I'm saying is, like, it's no point to get Mason Mount if you can't have somebody scoring fucking goals, bro. Because last year, like I said, Bruno was playing out of his mind, and we he got like eight assists because nobody could score in this team. We need a number nine. We need two number nines. And if you're being serious, we probably need three number nines. And obviously, that's not going to all happen this window. But like that is a position where we have un- arguably goalie and striker. We have underinvested the most over the last five years. We have basically just counted on David De Gea, and somehow we never bought a striker. We just kept buying right wingers. Let's buy a striker. We're dying for one. And number nines, they're trying. They make the difference. They're trying right now. Trying. But let's finish off the deal terms for amount. It's a five year deal through 2028, uh, plus one year for an extension to 29, 55 million plus five in add ons, 200,000 to 250K, 
What kills me is the wages. If he was on 145, like well, I'd take it, but the 200 to 250k wages, it's market now. You can't offload him if it doesn't go bad. I feel like when you sell players, you need the buyback in case you make a mistake. When you buy players, you need the low wages because that kills you on these long-term deals. That's why Jaden Sancho is going to be riding the bench at United for the next couple of years. <laughs> you get screwed by these wages that we give out. And they said they weren't going to give wages over a certain amount. It sounds like they are. Absolute clown show. We need someone to come fix fix this thing. All right, next bit of news here. Manchester United have risk overpaying again $60 million, $60 million pounds for Mason Mount with just a year left on his Chelsea deal. Pogba, Magoo, and Anthony have proven the Red Devils have a history of costly errors. I mean, where's Sanchez? Where's Lukaku? Where's all these other players? This is just the biggest top three top of mind. I mean, even yeah. like we overpay for AWB, overpay for Fred, we overpay, you know, keep going all day, baby. Like we go, we, we could have gotten uh, Casemiro for like 10, 15 million less. We just, we're not, we're not competent in the front of the house. Like it, it's just a huge weakness for the side. We've got a top manager, but at the end of the day, like, no one could have saw I, the one thing. One I'm going to defend is no one could have saw Paul Pogba. What are you like, talking about? What are you talking? No, Listen to Alex Ferguson was like he had a bad attitude. Eighteen. No, I understand, but like, like they, that okay. was a terrible idea. No, but here's the deal: we bring back Paul Pogba. You didn't think that that would be like the peak, and he'd be all decline from there. I mean, really, he won the World Cup and then just downhill. Uh, to the point where even Juve wants to get rid of him. That's kind of sad to see, even it as a sad. fan. Like even seeing somebody like Paul Paul Pogba, uh, you know, whatever people have feelings about him, but just seeing a footballer who has so much potential just kind of run down the 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 drain is not exciting. Uh, Magoo, absolute should've nobody. Walked. We should have walked and away. And Anthony is TBD. Uh, I I have a lot of heartburn with that price tag and what we got especially given that the manager green let that one was like, get me this guy, no matter what the cost. Uh, and he, he just doesn't have the speed for me. Like the fundamentals, you look at Saka and Arsenal, we went to the Emirates, saw him play. He's got the raw talent. Anti, I don't even know what we got other than the spin move out on the right wing. The left it, foot. It, he's got. I mean, he's, he's got, got a, a nice left foot. foot. You're right. He's got, he's got a nice left foot. He has a, he he's has, a dog, but, but you can't be a two tree. He's not that fast, which is a problem. The number one category for me on guy. the wing is speed in the in this league is ultimately is you got to be fast, got to be able to beat a man. Um, but yeah, overpaying. What's new? Manchester United I overpaid. They, we'd get overpaid, sir. How about that? <laughs> would you say? I wish <laughs> we would get overpaid. <laughs> yeah, Let's move on. The goalkeeper. Uh, and if this tells you anything about United. If you had a plan, you Manchester wouldn't be doing in a anything nutshell, this right? In yeah. a nutshell, there's nothing that better encapsulates like the mismanagement. Like, hey, uh, he's a free agent today. De Gea's contract, we let run down. We don't have a replacement for him. Dean Henderson, at one point, was going to compete with De Gea, but then we brought him back. Then Talk we let him out. Talked then a lot he of talked, shit. Then he obviously ran his mouth. Uh, so he doesn't seem like a good guy. <laughs> like, you don't want that guy back at United. So he's kind of out. Trying to sell him. Haven't sold him yet. De Gea, we kind of gave him a deal. Then he agreed to it. Then we pulled the rug on him which is like a very Jersey uh, business move, not one that you would expect to be treating like a servant of the club like David De Gea. Obviously, the manager is trying to be saying, hey, we, I need a different goalie. We got to move off of him. Uh, Onana looks like an option. Apparently, Inter want 40 to 50 million for him. But the issue that I have is you're telegraphing what yep. you need. Yep, yep into the open, which is how you don't want to do business, even to the point where we told Tom Heaton he can't leave. Heaton's not viable. Heaton's not viable as a he's first a option No, keeper. he's a backup. He's a backup. So then what happens? We're going to bring backup. Hendo back, the guy who just like slated everyone in the whole club, probably was like the leak during all that. Like, One and of you're going to bring him back in the locker team room? Of leaks. That's a bad look. No, you and let the hail leave, you sell Hendo, and you sign a, a Oana or uh, Costa. Out they, of, their out price of just went up if you don't have a goalie. Yeah, but here's, the problem. Everybody here's knows, what you do. Everybody knows we're going Here's for. what you do. But Inter need money. Apparently, Inter are cash strapped, need to sell them. They need cash. And but I, the thing that makes me nervous about this is the amount of posturing I'm seeing from the Italian press. Like, oh, we got an offer coming close, coming close, coming close. That makes me worried. Because I just Ten Hag has a relationship with him at Ajax. He and, played under him. Yeah. Uh, apparently, he made errors there as well. So uh, this is one of those things where it's the devil you know 
And this is what people don't want to hear. And everyone hates De Gea. And look, I'm not, I think he should be gone. I think we need to move on. So like you look at this summer, the summer is a summer where we learn things last year. We apply those learnings and we get better. That's not what's going to happen. This is treading water. And it's, you got to pick your spots. And you, if De Gea is willing to come back on less money, you sign De Gea, you sign a young prospect for cheap. And then you try to figure it. So you maybe even do a deal for a keeper in January. You need us. De Gea is the option to get us through next season. And you try to move off them next the the following season. Could you save the money to then go spend 80 to 100 million on the nine that we are dying for? This is an or situation. It's like, do you want a new keeper? And uh, who's the guy at West Ham that nobody wanted? Uh, the like, striker? The do you keeper? want Wout and uh, the striker? Antonio? No, the Scar- the Scaramucci, uh, uh the Italian guy? Who's no, the 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 striker that nobody wanted that we got linked to. Arnautovic. Arnautovic. Okay. Arnautovic. Do you want Onana and then Wout and Arnautovic at nine? Or do you want like Osiman and De Gea and like nobody uh like on loan for a striker? Clearly, I'm going to say Osiman, De Gea, you, you you have to pick or. So is the keeper more important than the nine? We have zero nines. Uh, De Gea is a body, not a great one, will limit us next season, but I just really think the whole idea of like making shooting ourselves in the foot here with the keeper situation and, and, and not throwing all of our dry powder on a nine, I, just, I really feel like as much as it sucks to see De Gea for another year, we probably need that, save the money, and just go all in on striker. See, I disagree. I think I like I. You do, can't do both. For well, let me let me just talk talk to you. Uh, striker is a priority, uh, undoubtedly. Like probably the number one. This is a number two priority. It's more important than Mason Mount, which doesn't make sense to me. Is like you don't get Mason Mount before you get a new top draw keeper who could play at the back, play the way Eric Ten Hag wants to play. But we did. I'm not. I'm just saying, sir. Is like, but we did get. He Mount. is more of a priority than Mason Mount. Okay, Midfield, so, he, so here's the budget. Let me just let me, my, let, let, let me make line my up the budget first. Let me line up the budget. We have 100 million. We spend 60 on Mason Mount. We have 40 left. We're going to sell 40. Then we have 80. You want to spend 50 of that 80 on a new goalie and 30 on the striker? I would spend 50 on Awana versus 50 on Mason Mount. I would cobble together midfielder, you know, Fred, McTominay. We have, but we can't do that. So the whole point is we sign Mount. What do you do next? That's the whole. What do we do next? That's not the the point. The point is like I would prioritize this over Mason Mount is the point I'm trying to make because Mason Mount is nice to have. Yes, we're gonna need him if we want to compete. If he's the guy, but we need a goalkeeper because David De Gea, he wants to take a wage cut and still be the highest paid goalkeeper in the league. And you know what? He should he he could be a backup. He's not good enough. He's holding us back. We need a striker and we need a goal. So I don't want to compromise. I, I'm so you we, just so the whole premise of the question is the whole premise is it makes million no budget. sense to, ha- to sign Mason Mount when midfield is not even the top two priority. It's okay. goalie and striker. So and striker. given that there is no time machine and we are signing Mason Mount for sixty million and we have forty million left in our budget and maybe another forty, that's eighty million. The eighty million could get you Harry Kane at the end of the maybe. window. Eighty million could get you Hoyland. He ain't worth 80. 50 worth million can get you Oana, but if you spend 50 on Oana, you're not getting Hoyland for 30. So if you have 80 million to say 80 to 90 million, what are you going to do? You get to sign Onana, you get to sign a Hoyland. What's the call? You Is probably resign De Gea, you probably resign Hendo. De Gea's gone, bro. Like you don't need to bring De Gea back. He, he like doesn't do you no know positives. Bring back Henderson by, by a 20 but the million. The leaking do- and all that. That was pretty toxic. Yeah, but De Gea wants to be the highest paid goalkeeper in the league at half his wages, and he's not even good enough to be a second string keeper at this club, bro. Like he can't play at the back, makes so many errors, has gotten Golden Glove last season. Yeah, half of that was on the defense and how good the midfield but was still it in front of him. It barely works, sir. And the, Champions so, League fi- the final in the FA Cup, he was okay, terrible. So he, was wor- he was our worst player on the pitch. So Dean Henderson, goalie. Plus another $20 million, like random kid out of the Netherlands. I would I would sign two strikers. I would sign like cheapo options. You're not going to be able to get Harry Kane because Levy's going to put you over barrel. Uh, Osterman, they want 150 million euros. So that's out of the question. I try to get the Danish kid and what other like random 
random striker out of wherever. Like, I'm not a scout, bro. I just think this highlights the whole point, which is that fixing these two positions is not possible this window. So it's like, my After you splash is, on Mount, you screwed yourself. Is like, you yes, should exactly. have punted on Mount and focused on striker and then goalie because that's I agree. more important in my mind. I, we could have I figured agree. it out with midfield, play Fred, fuck it, give him a couple years extra. Who cares? We know he's not the guy, but like, we got a fixed striker and goalie. The fact that we went mad first is my, is a little surprising to me because... Like no, said, it's the manager's a priority. The, the what I see here and the whole you know the whole debate is ultimately the manager wants to do more than what the club can. Yeah, and that's what as fans we're arguing about is because we need a new. We're dying to get rid of. Hey, I totally agree. We're dying to get a proper midfield running and ticking and to get a number nine. But I just don't think we can realistically do all of those things, given the budget we've been quoted, given how bad we are at selling. And we're going to have to kind of pick. Now, you're right. The Hendo coming back, that's an option. But I just have a gut feeling about me that he's just a toxic guy, was bad in the locker room, Hendo. don't want him back. Right? Yeah. He talked smack openly wherever he went on loan at Nottingham Forest. Yep. He's kind of been sort of a chump. Hasn't done it since Sheffield United. De Gea United uh, has all these records at United. You can give him a proper send off. You get a young guy behind him, and then you go all in number nine. I'm just, I just know what we were when we had proper number nines when we got Zlatan back. You, you, you sign Mount. Who is he going to pass it to? Work, bro. That was a but it's just like a nine in. that can score. Yeah, you know, and we've been need. dying. I, I was watching highlights of RVP, and I'm just like, maybe that's Stop what it. I'm just like. Stop it. I'm like, oh my god, yeah. a striker who can like <laughs> score goals, like even with this like midfield. It's like I need more of that in my life, and it's just like it's tough to watch United with no teeth. We don't have teeth, and we don't have a number nine. And look, goalie is all the rage right now, but I feel like we're looking the wrong direction. We need a ruthless goal scorer and just get by at goalkeeper at the, at the moment. Yeah. Um, I'll tell you what, if you could get Harry Kane for 80 million, you take it. I don't know if they'll sell him for 80, but like even with a Harry Kane who can put in 25 goals in the EPL with a midfield that still got some holes in it and De Gea who can't pass the ball for his fucking life. You're probably giving yourself a better chance to finish in the top four, which is a target for next season. We ain't competing for shit. Um, then without, because we need goals. If you look at last season, like, yeah, we were leaky. We had some really embarrassing games throughout. De Gea had some howlers. Our midfield had some howlers. Our defense let themselves down. But, like, the at the end of the day, the one, number one thing that held us back was that we did not score nearly enough goals for how many chances we created. We created exactly. a shit ton of chances. You, but that's what I'm we saying. We couldn't like, score for our life. Brass tags looking – brass tags as much as everyone wants to hate. Golden Glove, great defense, didn't score enough goals. I want to invest all the money into scoring goals and just running it back with the hay as great bad of a taste as that is in, in a lot of fans mouths and my mouth. And we're going to have to play this kind of shaky out the back bullshit again. I just think we need goals. I think last season we were begging for it and also not having those like don't show up, get just destroyed uh, games. Sir, talk to me about some loan deals here. Uh, we're selling players. Another sale. Iqbal, everyone got pissed off. I, I think this player is better than Iqbal. Ethan Laird moves on. We sold him to Birmingham on a permanent deal for £750,000. 21-year-old English right back. Not has the physicality probably making the EPL, but a player that had a lot of promise. Really strong going forward. High physicality. Um, and once again, United selling cheap, you know, I think other clubs can sell them for five, seven, eight, ten million. 10 million. We sell for under a million and that's just the Manchester United way. It's a shame. They're trying to basically sell everybody they can this season. They're trying to sell, obviously the players you talked about, the Hendos, the Martials who won't move. Like you said, Sancho won't move. Ain't nobody picking up three fifty a week. Um, I heard there was like a loan offer where someone was like, yeah, yeah, you can pay half his wages and loan them to us. Yeah. That's a great deal for us. Um, they're trying to sell Hannibal. They, they don't rate Hannibal. He's on the way out. So it's just a shame because, like, we're going to be given, you know, we need to sell players to buy, but you'd like for us to be able to get some value because everyone else runs circles around us. Even mid table clubs get more value out there. Like, Leicester City are better at selling than we are, which is incredible. And they're in the fucking championship. So I can't wait for this long, strange trip to end with the Glazers. I hope it does. We don't even have any confidence that it will, but. Uh, their, their incompetence is the most frustrating thing. It's not about splendid cash 
carelessly and forever. It's just like I just don't want us to be, be like have the rug pulled over our eyes over and over again when it comes to buying and selling players in the transfer window. And that's where we're at. Look, as far as uh, the transfer stumbling, rumbling, bumbling, this is just going to be the standard for the summer. We're asking questions. Why aren't we fixing this? What are we doing with that? 60 million Mason Mount. Look, I'm a, I'm a full Mount Muppet now. <laughs> like, love Mason Mount. Love He's the fan. solution to all of our problems. Yeah, he'll score 30 next he'll, year. He could bounce the ball off Walt Weghorst into the net. That's how good he is. That's my position wow. currently at the moment. I'm going full Mason Mount. Mount kit. Let's go. Um, I'm, I'm a, I'm a Mount Muppet. I think he's going to be a good signing. Uh, I'm, I, I don't know if I believe be. the words coming out of my yeah, mouth. You don't sound you know, very I'm confident. A full you Mount Muppet confident. now. I'm a full, like, this is just torture. Being a United fan is torture, <laughs> yeah, bro. I, I just said it. I've been having like, a pod. It's true. No, it's just, we've been dying for you so suck. long. And the fact that this sale process is just like, we're just on the pavement bleeding out, being like, hurry up. Sell us. Hurry up. We're bleeding out. We got a whole nother season. We got to watch 50 games. We got to listen to watch Mason Mount. Like somebody Mason buy us Mount. so we can get some better players. <laughs> somebody, so can someone buy us so we can get us a Stusta st- st- striker? Can football. we get a striker? I just don't want to see the Pia <laughs> brothers no more. Uh, yes, they will be gone. Uh, if they are not, then I'm out. Then there's, <laughs> I'm taking then a year off. It's like, yeah, we might need then to. Darren, I, I know you know who's going to hang out. Darren Fletcher will survive. The other two guys, they'll get hooked. Nobody will survive, in my opinion. They shouldn't. But they Darren did. Fletcher will. Because he'll, he'll they'll be like, oh, I was a United legend. I was a United Continuity. No one's coming oh, through. No like, I'll tell you who's coming through. The accounting staff. Yeah, they're the yeah. top bucket. Yeah, the, the 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 people running the finance function, they're going to stick around because that's what they need. Uh, jumping into fan questions here at Vin City, Van City. I'd rather hear a recap of a match from 15 years ago than hear about the Glazers still being owners. Amen. I think we all agree there. And I was watching RVB, RVP highlights with my son last night, and he's just like, wow, that guy's really good. You know, and I'm like, yeah. yeah Man, watching yes. Manchester United, we used to just like watch all these games and score all Dominate. these goals. It was like, it was really great. <laughs> it was a long time ago. Nostalgia. At Love the Bulls 18, we are nostalgia merchants. Uh, quote, knowing the Glazers are still owners, small, but get this summer a very thin. Uh, small budget this summer and a very thin squad last year. Do you see United keeping players and not selling anyone? Because I do, and I believe Eric Ten Hag can develop them to do better. Hmm. I think the shopping list we saw in the press is means correct. like, like what would that mean for you if you were a player on that list <laughs> and you don't get sold? Like that's uh, that's why you don't do that move correct. either. It's like because United's like we want to sell all these guys and then you bring them back and you're like just kidding we really like you and they'll do that right later in the window they'll be like actually you know we really value Jaden Sancho you know we really value Martial trying to give him confidence in the last year of his contract. You're right, sir, because like it'd be one thing if you're like, these are the players we want to sell, like Chelsea did, and they sold like almost all of them. We will not even sell half of those players by the time September first comes around. Because we're just we're we have poor execution at the end of the day. We we have idiots running the club. Um, so I think you're making a really good point. It's like what kind of confidence does that give to the players like a Jaden Sancho who has huge wages and a huge price tag and a lot of pressure when he's not sold because he will not be sold because nobody is going to pay him 350,000 pounds a week for like four or five goals a year, four or five assists a year in the EPL. It's just we will. Happen. Yeah, we are. <laughs> At Olsen, Dylan, quote, this video I saw in Mason Mount uh, gives me some perspective and hope. Hopefully this guy is right. I will say I've always liked Mount. Hope it works out. Now, there's all these videos talking about the tactical reasons for signing Mason Mount. Look, he is very good at finding the key term. We're going to say pockets of space. He is great defensively in the midfield. Seems to be an Eric Ten Hag, ter, Eric Ten Hag guy. The question is: Are you outsmarting? You think you're outsmarting everyone? Player on a slump year, last contract, overpay. If he's that dog, has a chip on his shoulder, and he plays lights out, which I think he can. It's gonna be a great signing. But uh, all these YouTube compilations and cutups, you know I who know, like you, can. you can't outsmart. Everybody, sometimes there's like Holland coming up in the game, scoring, 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 just by that guy. 
uh, we don't want to pay the dad at 20 million. Well, you know what? He went to shitty and now he won't stop scoring for them. So how about you pay the dad 20 million? Like what was, what did Ed Woodward say? Why we didn't want to sign Holland? What was it? The agent fee? It's so like, oh, yeah, the, welcome the to the show, bro. Fee. It's like, here's the deal. You, you need to get that player. You pay out the nose. And, the, and there's a certain thing on the come up. And look, is he ever going to stop scoring? Probably not. We you had know, two bites of the Mason apple. Mason Mount stopped scoring. We had the Dortmund apple. Jaden oh. Sancho stopped scoring. Yeah. So it's like, that's an issue for this type of player. And uh, is he going to turn around? Like, all this analysis points to yes, but if he doesn't, then, like, all this analysis is mute. So just we take it with a We could when he left Norway before there was a $25 million da- hey, I'm no, the dad of this generational player. Is the reason we didn't sign him no, was like, cheap, doesn't cheap matter. is cheap, bro. And this club is cheap. And that sounds like a you problem, not a me problem. Yeah, Get exactly. him in a United kit and have him score for Manchester United. He sell a ton of kits. Exactly. At CR8. O N underscore quote. If we only have a hundred million, a goalkeeper becomes a must. Whether or not De Gea's performances, he's going to have zero confidence now. Didn't want Mount, but at least he's got some sort of depth in midfield. Get the goalie move now, and if we can sell players, good on us. This is a debate we just had. It's saying, hey, it seems like we really need a striker and a goalie. Why are we signing Mason Mount? I agree with you. Goalkeeper is a priority, but is is it more of a priority than scoring goals, which was like literally the one stat that we just just couldn't make it? Goals for goals against goal differential. It's like horrific compared to the other teams in the top four. We need a goal scorer. We need a lot of priorities, but none bigger than goalie and goal scorer. And goal scorer, I would say, is number one. And the fact that we haven't gone for that first, hey, man, we got a lot of work to do and not a lot of budget to stretch. All right, at Randy Scrandy L, quote, I don't think people realize just how bad this upcoming season is going to be. We will be hard-pressed to actually offload the losers that plague this side and won't be much busier in the market. We'll be lucky to make the Europa League next season. Need Qatar to save us next year. Given what we've done, do you think he is, his uh, prediction around Europa League is correct? Lucky to make Europa League. I think Arsenal's four, getting better. Everyone, everyone's getting better. Everyone, City's getting better. Liverpool are getting much better. Right? Spurs are getting. Chelsea's better. the wild card for the top four. Chelsea's the wild card. They I have don't a think shit they're going to players, bro. They've got strikers that we don't have. Um, I think all those clubs are going to be better. So I think top four is going to be a challenge, uh, given all of the strength we need to bring in. Dude, we don't have a number nine still. Like, if you're going to go in and tout Martial, who can play like. 18 games a year in the EPL, like you're fucked. Score five goals from 18 games and miss half the season, like we're in trouble. We are in big trouble because, like you said, we can cobble together with defense. De Gea, Jesus Christ, he can't pass. But like, you know, when he's on, he'll have a worldy. We need goals. And the fact that we don't have goals is worrisome. So this season coming up is going to be a challenge because, dude, the Glazers are still around. The sale, we don't even know what's happening. Will they even sell there's, no, there's not a 100% guarantee they will sell. It does feel like they will at this point, given how long it's dragged, but next year is going to be rough. Last one here at Charlie underscore Ferris. The Glazers are leeches first and foremost. Mount will be better for us than people realize. Need that new keeper and striker badly. This next month is going to be painful, waiting for things to happen. Not enough dark ales to drown the misery. Hashtag Glazers out. I agree. Sale signings. If you're looking for happiness from a sales and sale and signing perspective, we're probably going to get an announcement on the sale this summer. That's going to be the big win. Signings are going to be an L. The, this whole transfer season is going to be an L. We're not going to get rid of enough players. We're not going to get enough in. That's just the dynamics of everything is going to go down. But the big win is Eric Ten Hag. Eric Ten Hag. He's going to be doing the work he's been doing and adding to it and tweaking it. We can expect an improvement. But honestly, if we get fifth next season, you got to be blamed in the sale process. Yep. You can't be blaming the manager yep. because it, he's got to be dealing with like, imagine if he can't get rid of, like you said, Martial, M- Magoo, Sancho, like, and then you got to hope no. Anthony comes good. We, oh, Anthony with a big got second tell us. season. We still got fucking buy. So, it's like we have so, so much. This is wood. a multi-year rebuild and this could it, you know, wherever we're going and wherever our owners are going to be, this could be, we could look back on this year and being like, this is when we sorted a lot of things out. Not fun going through it because you, we want to be punching like Arsenal coming in second and making a statement in the transfer window. It's we're not like that right now. It is a tough time to be a United fan. But you know what is a holiday weekend? We hope everyone has a great 4th of July. Happy 4th to all America Red Devils. 
And if you like the podcast, support us on Patreon. Uh, you know, we have an extra episode every single month, tons of other benefits. Please check out our Patreon page, patreon.com slash American Red Devils. Uh, also check out our website, americanredevils.com, americanredevils.store for some merch. So I think we have some top 10 downloads we want to get to as well. Um, but again, hang in there this summer. Hopefully everyone's enjoying the barbecues, getting some uh, nice vacations in. Alex is going to be grilling up for the 4th of July. I'm bringing the family over. We have lots going on uh, for the barbecue, sir. Tell them Kids that. keeping us busy. Family keeping us busy. I hope everyone has a great 4th of July. For those in the States celebrating and enjoy some time off, hopefully from work. Uh, with their loved ones, with their family, doing whatever makes you happy. Here are our top 10 cities last seven days. Mason Mount. Mason Mount, number one fans here. I'm the, number the one. I got him, I'm, I'm getting the Mason Mount kit number 19, for the reverse jinx. Calling it now. They're going to give... What they're going to do is they're going to give Veron number four. And now that Phil Jones has finally driven his pink Lamborghini out of Carrington. Uh, and I predict Mason Mount gets number 19, but we will see. Number one, how you doing? How you doing? Chicago, Illinois, New York, New York, Dallas, Texas, Charlotte, North Carolina, Orlando, Florida, Los Angeles, California, Dublin, Ireland, San Francisco, California, Philadelphia, PA, and last but not least, St. Louis, Missouri. Uh, appreciate all the American Devils listening week in, week out. Wow, couldn't do it without you. It's gonna be a long summer. Buckle up, folks. Hey, Wout Wag Horse is gone. We got. We, we're gonna talk now. about that for in the next now. Spot. <laughs> you better stay gone. No, no, he's gone. Uh, Sabitzer for, from Romano. Sabitzer Wout done. No, I know, but still, you never, never say na- no. Never on say <laughs> never. Never say done on Wout. We'll leave you with a classic here. Everyone have a great Fourth of July. Enjoy the week, and we'll be back next weekend for some more summer transfer puppetry.